Hello, my name is Tom Campbell. I own Alexander Australia and represent Alexander Horns in this part of the world. At Campbell Brasswind Service, I have also been repairing and servicing brass and woodwind instruments for the past 35 years and working as a professional horn player for even longer than that. Today, I'm going to talk a little bit about what you can do to keep your horn in good shape. For most players, a professional clean and service should be done about once a year. The service frequency can depend to some extent on how you use your horn, but individual differences in body chemistry really do seem to make a difference to how much your horn might be affected by oxidation. Some players may need to have a professional clean and service as often as every six months. Other players can get away with going longer than a year between services. You can ask your repair technician the next time you have your horn serviced whether it should be done more or less often. I'm going to use my horn to demonstrate today. It's nearly a year old and I know it needs some attention. The valves are starting to feel a bit gritty, like they want to stick, which is a sure sign that they need attention. I would normally take care of this as soon as I notice any sign that everything is not 100%, but I've been saving this up to show you. When a horn is brand new, the metal on the inside is nice and clean and shiny and particularly ready to start oxidizing and picking up any grunge. So it's particularly important that the first professional clean and service happens well within the first 12 months. I'll show you what the valves look like on the inside and I'm pretty sure we're going to see some green oxidation. But first I'll demonstrate what you can do between professional services to keep your horn working perfectly. I'm going to clean out the lead pipe slides mouthpiece using the Riga cleaning kit for horn. We'll thoroughly soak the sponge ball end of this Rika lead pipe cleaner and squeeze some dishwashing detergent into it. Alternatively, you can use specially made Rika Desk liquid. This helps clean the inside of the lead pipe and also acts as a lubricant as we pull the sponge ball through the lead pipe. I'll feed the small end of the cleaner through from the slide end of the lead pipe and pull it through. My favorite dishwashing liquid for cleaning horns, by the way, is Morning Fresh because it rinses easily and completely with no film left over. <laughs> This is one of the most important things you can do to keep your horn in good shape and prolong its life. By removing anything that can promote oxidation on the inside of your lead pipe, you can avoid the dreaded red rot, where the zinc is removed from the brass alloy, leaving just the copper with microscopic spaces where the zinc used to be. When the copper then oxidizes, it becomes brittle and tiny holes can form that show up as red spots on the outside of the lead pipe. The only real remedy for red rot is the replacement of the part. Come back into the slides out. Next, we'll clean out the slides. As you take out each slide, rub off all the old slide grease until the metal feels completely clean and dry.
Also, wipe out the end of each slide tube, where some old grease might have built up. Now you may want to put the slides in water to soak, but it's not really necessary if you clean the slides regularly. If you do soak the slides or any part of a lacquered horn, make sure the water is no more than lukewarm, since very hot water could possibly loosen some lacquer. We'll use this slide cleaning stick to clean out the insides of the inner slide tubes. We'll wet the sponge end and put some Rika Des on it before use, just as we did with the lead pipe cleaner. Then rub the inside of the tube Rinse and wipe again. Never push anything into the outer valve slide tubes, though, unless the valves are removed first. There are two reasons for this. First, you will be pushing old slide grease and dirt into the valves if you push anything down these slide tubes. But most importantly, anything you push into the valves could get stuck, and that would jam the valves so that they could not move or be removed without professional attention. We'll put the mouthpiece in to soak for a while. They do seem to get a bit of buildup on the inside. We'll use the mouthpiece brush to clean out the mouthpiece. At this point, it's a good idea to do a quick check to make sure there are no loose joints or stays. We'll use a little gentle pressure to see if we can feel any movement. Okay, now we're ready to grease the slides and oil the valves. I use La Tromba cork and slide grease on the slides, and I use La Tromba valve oil with a silicon additive, sometimes known as La Tromba T1, on rotary valves. I would not use this particular valve oil on close-fitting piston valves because that silicon additive can build up on the surfaces when we have metal rubbing on metal. In that case, I would use the very pure La Tromba T2, which is made specifically for that close-fitting piston valves. However, if the piston valves are a little bit worn, I may use the silicon additive, or if it, they're particularly worn, I might use something even thicker like this La Tromba slide oil. First I'll grease the slides and get them ready. As I said, I'm using La Tromba cork and slide grease for the slides. This is a Swiss made grease made with high quality natural ingredients. I like the silky smooth slide action I get with La Tromba slide grease, but if you prefer a smooth but heavier slide feel, I recommend Hetman Synthetic Slide Gel. I also recommend Hetman Valve Oil if you prefer a synthetic oil instead of the La Tromba Natural Products. I'll just do a few slides for now to demonstrate since my horn is due for a full service and will be fully disassembled and cleaned before I properly lubricate and reassemble it. After greasing the slide, I'm putting it on a clean surface so it doesn't pick up any dust or dirt before it goes back in the horn. The most important part of lubricating the rotary valves is oiling the bearings. The bearings are the only contact surfaces on rotary valves, so they need the protection of proper lubrication to keep them working smoothly and to give them a long life. The valves on all modern Alexander horns have a lubrication channel system to help get the oil distributed along the hole of the bearing, so I will put a couple of drops here in the hole under the valve cap. 
On the shaft end, we put a drop or two here, just below the rotor stop, where the oil can get pulled into the bearing as you work the valves. As you get the oil into the bearing like this, make sure to wipe away any excess oil from the outside so that it doesn't pick up dust and dirt that can eventually work its way into the bearing. That can slow down the action and cause extra wear. The idea with lubrication is to use the heaviest oil you can that still gives you a quick action. La Tromba Key and Linkage Oil comes in three thicknesses, light, medium, and heavy. My valves are new and perfectly fitted, so I will use a couple drops of light oil. When oiling the valves, it's important that the valve oil drops straight down the slide tube without running down the sides, because this can cause some of the slide grease to end up inside the valves and slow the valve action down. So a few drops straight in like that, straight down, work it a little bit, and it's done. If your horn has mechanical action valves, apply a tiny bit of oil, less than a drop really, to each joint and work the oil in by moving the valve levers. Then wipe away any excess oil. If your horn has string action valves, you should now check to make sure that the strings are in good shape and there's no sign that any of them are starting to fray. If you need to replace a string, there is an explanation on the Campbell Brasswind website, or you can find many videos on YouTube showing exactly how to change a valve string. If you find that your valve strings seem to fray a lot and need replacing, it may be that there are sharp edges cutting into the string either around the holes where the string passes through the key lever shaft or on the edges of the string screws. Ask your repair technician to chamfer the holes and or smooth off the sharp edges around the screws if you think this may be a problem. As a final step, you may want to apply La Tromba lacquer polish to protect your lacquer. Lacquer is not meant to last forever, but the lacquer polish can help prolong its life, and it also feels very nice to the touch. All of the things I've been talking about would be done during a full professional service. In addition, your repair technician will fully disassemble your horn, chemically or ultrasonically clean all parts of the horn, check for any loose solder joints, and check for dents. The removal of a few small dents might be included in the standard service, but more serious or difficult dents would normally be an additional item and charged accordingly. Some repair technicians would replace all the valve bumpers and strings at every service. I don't feel that this is necessary, since good valve strings and bumpers can last for many years without any problem. Strings and bumpers should be carefully checked for any sign of wear, though, and if the bumpers start feeling a little hard, I would suggest replacing them. When checking valve alignment, I would trust the valve marks on good quality valves, like Yamaha valves or the Meinl-Schmidt valves on many of the professional instruments, but with cheap, poorly made Chinese horns, I would not trust the alignment marks and always check inside the slide tubes to make sure that the valve ports and air channels on the rotors align correctly. Once the valves are clean and lubricated and reassembled, I would check the bearings to make sure there's not any excess play a little end play is okay, but if you grab the rotor stop and try to push the shaft side to side, you should not feel any movement. This side play, not end play, is usually what causes noisy valves. But more importantly, if the bearings aren't holding the rotor centered in the valve case, the rotor can start to rub on the valve case and cause wear and eventual air leakage. All loose bearings should be tightened. On some of the cheap and nasty Chinese horns, it is not possible to get the valves right if all the parts of the rotor are not concentric and true. In that case, the only thing you can do is to make do with a faulty horn and save up for a better quality instrument.
finished. Now my horn is in good shape again. I wouldn't normally let it get to this point where the valves felt like they were going to stick, but it was good for the demonstration. Okay, I'm going to use some of this uh, La Trombo lacquer polish. It's really good stuff. I really recommend it if you have a lacquered horn. So it just takes a little squirt, not much at all. That's enough. I'll take my cloth and just polish it until it's all nice and shiny and clean. It feels so nice to the touch. Doesn't take very much. And it does really protect the lacquer. Feels nice to touch and it protects the lacquer. There we go. Too easy. Beautiful. If you want to get any of the products I talked about, they're available from your local musical instrument shop, or you can find them on the Alexander Australia website. Thank you for watching, and happy horning.